What's going on, everybody? I'm going to help you get through picking a major for your college education. So we're going to go ahead and look at this, and you're going to take a few of these and just get rid of them um, because you don't need them. First one, architecture. So architecture is great for people who hate great architecture. Benefits of this include designing homes with the capability to be made out of purely cardboard and putting things where they don't belong, like making the outside, but do it inside and pranking your university into building a giant toilet. Cons include, you will probably end up homeless at some point, and it's actually very difficult to get into a good program. But the payoff may be worth it. You have a free pass to be a pain in the ass to everybody who works with you. B tier. When it comes to language, you pretty much have four opportunities. Teaching English, teaching English to foreign children, writing, or interpreting. This being the most lucrative career, especially if you major in something like Mandarin. Some positives to being a language major are that good writers and interpreters are usually in demand if you're actually good at it. You also get a chance to learn language real good. Cons, though, are that you spend $50,000 to learn language real good, and there's a potential that you become the annoyance to friends and family. F tier. Science. A to Z tier, I'm gonna go ahead and call it here. You have the ability to save the human race from disease, <clears throat> might be useful, or you can spend four years studying how nudibranchs procreate. This can really put quite the strain on the decision-making of the prospective science major in actually determining what they want to do within science because there's so many different fields. Uh, but all these fields have a large range of difficulty and whatever you pick would largely depend on your pain tolerance. So gingers likely have the best shot of surviving through biochem. Also, physics really does not exist to be a major in its own. Its only purpose is to fail prospective engineering students. Cons, though, you will 100% have to make it through a general chemistry lab. Health science. So I call this the pre-major, as in this major is pre a lot of things. Pre-med, pre-pharmacy, pre-vet, pre-death. Otherwise, you specialize in doing things that doctors don't have the time for or won't make enough money doing. The pros of this are you can think you are a scientist. The cons, you are actually not a scientist. A tier. Next up we have social science, not to be confused with actual science, commonly referred to as the insurance agent major. It is rapidly devolving into the barista major though. This is largely due to coffee shop going hipsters taking the initiative to become more specialized in their undecided degree. Should only be used for pre-law, and that is actually a pro. You can go pre-law in this. Other pros? And on to the cons, everything else. F tier. If you're a communications major, you are either a sports fan or you did not make it as an English major. It can be useful though for rich kids with lots of family contacts. It's also useful for scholarship athletes. One undeniable pro of becoming a communications major is the high potential for alcohol intake. Another is that you have approximately a 1e to the negative 3% chance of becoming a broadcaster. Cons? None at all. S tier. The next one is art. This is the major where you can pay money to learn things that you can learn for free on YouTube. You should only consider this if you are highly talented and a very motivated person. And I've got to say this, the only major here worthwhile is media arts, purely based on the freelance potential. But this may only apply if your last name rhymes with Thornberry. But again, you can learn most of these skills for penny on the dollar through online courses. Pros. Do what you love. Cons. Potentially make no money. C tier. Education. So with this, you have to ask the question, do you live in the United States of America? If you check yes... Like, no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Do you live in South Korea? Oh, absolutely. Next up, we have religion. It is said to never bring religion and politics to the dinner table. Well, what if I told you that there was a way that you can carry both wherever you go? 
you can do this if you major in religion and minor in political science. Another benefit is you can educate your Sunday school teacher that Methuselah never died and is still walking the earth under the alias Keanu Reeves. Cons, negative skill points to your tolerance ability and no tangible skills whatsoever. T tier. Business. So this is either super serious or super bro. Success is 100% up to individual effort and again, good family contacts. Pros. You have the potential to do absolutely nothing for four years, and you will always be a stereotype among your friends. Cons will definitely enable the slacker in you. Can also lead to hair loss and narcissists. B tier. Engineering belongs in God tier because God himself is an engineer. This is not to be associated with industrial engineering, which makes up the N for not an engineer tier. The specific type of engineering that you choose to major in will determine whether you need to go to graduate school or not. Uh, there's pretty much only one of these. It's biomedical engineering. If you are in this major, you have to go to graduate school in order to survive. Everything else, you can pretty much get a job out of undergrad if you wanted to. Civil being the easiest path, chemical being the hardest, and you got like mechanical, computer, and electrical are kind of a wash in terms of difficulty. Oh, and pretty much everyone agrees that nuclear engineers are pretty cool but everyone shits on civil. Uh, benefits though, it's honestly one of the most stable job markets. Also, no matter how shitty you are at your job, friends and family will still hold you in high regard. At least they do in your mind. Cons though, expect very, very low test scores. And I mean test scores so low that it would cause a pre-med student to spontaneously combust. And you also should expect excessive amounts of stress with this. You also will get a bit of a superiority complex. There's about a 99.9% .9 chance this happens, and you may have some difficulty making friends who are not engineers. Finally, I realized that I may have missed a few important ones. Math is great if you don't need real-world applications to interest you, want to be a statistician, or want to be a poor man's computer scientist. B tier. Computer science is reserved for those who get excited at the thought of troubleshooting and optimizing chunks of code. It is not for those who get bored doing the same thing every day, and a useful degree can be obtained from a less expensive tech university or purely learned online. S tier with a stable job market and long-term viability. And if you're thinking about majoring in political science, there is already no saving you. Burn it with fire.